Boy, young Jizzle, nigga, y'all know what it is, man. DJ Dells. Peace, man. What's up, y'all? This is Common, and right now you're checking out DJ Dells. Stay in tune with him, all right? DJ Dells, absolutely wonderful. What it do, what it does, the kid, Mr. R.I.P. himself. Low so, in case you ain't no so rockin' with DJ Dells. And with it, y'all, it's your boy, Neighborhood Nip. Big shout-out to my homeboy, DJ Dells. Yeah. No question, Neighborhood Nip. Dells, red man, I'm in the building. Let's get it. Let's get it. We live. We are live covering this new Air Jordan version of the black the black metallic dyslexia already. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> I sold my black metallics for one hundred and twenty dollars. They were in good condition. That's what Rich says. Sorry to hear that, man. I still have my pair and I will not be selling them unless they fall apart. I love them. Um, but good news, you could kind of get them with these right here. Uh, a little different. Let's uh, dig into this a little bit. And as you're walking in, please hit the thumbs up. If you happy, I'm live because I need to know. Motivates me. So this shoe has like this uh, mesh on a lot of the panels to this. Uh, some are going to love this. Some are going to hate this. Me? I don't understand this, man, especially on the tongue. We love the reflective on the tongue. Um, I do love the black tongue fire red fives, though. They're dope. But uh, with this, uh, I don't know, man. I'm going to be honest with you. It's got it's got a lot of this. It's, it's basically throughout it. A little suede on the toe, it looks like. But throughout it, it's all this, like, mesh kind of material, um, maybe even a kind of canvas like material more or less i guess i'm going through these photos and i'm just like why you got your metallic teeth right there but besides that i mean they're gonna look good on feet if you're a fan of black sneakers shout out to my dude henry i know henry loves black sneakers uh you're gonna love this i think and i'm pretty sure henry loves these because they're basically all black I actually would have my would have liked if the eyelids were black. Also, um, I would have liked if everything was black except the teeth. You know, on the midsole, that would have hit harder. I think, uh, but you know, I don't know if there's any kind of story behind this, any kind of gimmick. I feel like they haven't been giving us too many gimmicky stories lately, um, and they're not bad. As I'm saying, like they're not bad. I just um, I like leather, and I like suede and, and new box you know like that that's what i'm into on a jordan uh it looks like also on the upper ankle you have suede on the upper ankle so it's an interesting vibe where you have suede and then you have like a canvas um kind of material yeah it looks more of like a canvas mesh as i said i still have them in hands but i mean i was saying this on the video before that they give us such high resolution photos now. You could basically see what you're getting without even having to watch a review. Uh, it's clear as day what you what you see here. And also, let me know what you think of the offset um, stitching, where it where it's you know it's not black on black. You actually have that look like gray stitching throughout it. Do you like that that stitching throughout it? It really stands out. That's one thing for sure, right? That the stitching throughout it really stands out, being that it's not the same color as the upper. Um, some are going to like that. Some are not going to like that. Uh, let's see what's going on in the chat. Let me see what's going on in this chat right here. Uh, what the hell, man? I'm trying to get there. There we go. All right. Here the stream at the five-minute mark. Um, five's got to be scorching hot to me to keep. Yeah, I feel you on that. Um this one for me is a pass. I, I don't need these. That that's one thing for sure. I I definitely am not like, yo, these are mine. When I when I see them, I have to have them. Um, no kind of nostalgia for me. And I gotta have that vibe, or it's gotta be something so bonkers in my eyes that I, I need these. But a lot of people are digging them. Rel likes them. Grace, what's up? Says dope shoes. They're not trash to me. They're definitely not trash to me, but Definitely not um, to the point where I'm like, yo, I got to have it. And, and I embrace new colorways. Um, and perfect segue for the sneaker of the stream. 
So sneaker of the stream is from the Kilroy pack. Uh, here we go. And as you can see, I do embrace new colors. Uh, this is a dope one. Kind of got almost like a Lakers colorway, kind of. Uh, I may be colorblind, but this is like a purplish blue to me. Uh, what is the official colorway of this? Deep Royal. It is Deep Royal. That's why I said I may be colorblind. I thought that this was a royal colorway. I, maybe I'm, am I going colorblind or th does this look a little purple to you? It, it looks kind of purple to me. Um, it looks more purple than royal, but I may be, I really may be going colorblind with, with blues and purple. Sometimes I feel like I'm effing going colorblind. I, I really do. With blue and purple, when I see them, like this looks purple to me. Tell me, Dells, it looks purple, or tell me, Dells, you're effing colorblind, bro. This looks clearly like navy. Um, it could be. He says warehouse colors, okay? Oh man, and, and this is the um what, what was the name of this? The Calvin Bailey's Calvin Bailey's. And uh, you know, with this shoe, the Jordan 9, you know, this is when Jordan Brand was going global and um Michael Jordan was also playing baseball, so that's why you have the inspiration with the cleat, the baseball stitching, the globe representing that they were really hitting that worldwide vibe, and um, you have all different writing on that. So the Jordan 9 is a is an amazing sneaker. Uh, people be sleeping on it. The reason why I like it, it look, they look great on feet. They're very comfortable because you have this Hirachi booty system, which it just it's a really nice shoe on feet. Um, not my favorite colorway, but you know, it's a good pair of kicks, man. It, one of my favorites. It would be definitely on my top 10, possibly on my top five favorite silhouettes. He says Warriors colorways. Okay, he says Royal Blue. Okay, it's a deep blue. Okay, so I'm colorblind then. Yeah, I'm messed up, man. I'm, I'm dyslexic, colorblind. I'm a, I'm a hot mess. Um, I always say I'm not wired correctly, and I'm not kidding when I say that. I'm not trying to be funny, but I but I embrace my, um, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> I'm trying to be politically correct, not say the wrong thing. Uh, but I'm out of control with this. But uh, let's let's get back to this. Oh, by the way, I did on the other video do an unboxing. I'll show you really quickly. Check the Cool Grade 3 video we did, the 2021 Cool Grade uh, 3 video we did. I'll put a pop-up where you could actually watch some of the um, the playlist. You can watch all – you can watch the playlist of all of these videos just showcasing everything that's coming out next year. So I picked up this. And we did an unboxing. Check that out. It was on the video we just did. We literally just streamed maybe 15 minutes ago. So check that one out. And um, it glows in the dark. And I think it's a great collector's item. And it's linked in the description box. So definitely check that out. But yeah, the focus is on this right here. Let me know what you all think of them. And yes, please hit the thumbs up button. Um, it's really crucial. Really crucial to do that. Um, it helps the videos out. And it motivates me. Um, I tell you, I say this all the time, man. Sometimes I feel like you guys don't need me on YouTube no more. And I feel like, you know what? It's time for me to retire, you know, retire from this. There's so many other YouTubers. So when I see I get over 100 likes, it, it, it makes me smile. And it makes me say, you know what? Let me turn this camera back on. So I, I need it. You know, um, shout out to Rob and uh, even Tony. They, they were showing me love a few days ago. And, and and uh, Rob was like, how does he not understand that what he's done with sneakers? You know, I understand that I've been around for a while, but sometimes I feel like, yo, my time has come to just chill, you know, hang it up and just be a spectator and, and still buy shoes. So um, everyone needs motivation, even me, for real. And um, thumbs ups do that. And thank you all for tuning in. Definitely. Thank you all. Ron's alter ego. What do you like? What do you think of these shoes, Ron? You always got some got a, a, an opinion on everything. Um, and I mean that in a good way. I don't mean that in a negative way. I love when people speak their mind. How do you feel about this shoe? A mixture of like a, a mesh canvas with some suede on the toe, and then they hit us with some in the back paws. Uh, what's going on with this shoe? We, we like this or no? Uh, I'm curious to know. Uh, are they doing too much? Are they doing too much or never too much? Never too much when it comes down to Jordan brand. The tongue completely, this canvas mesh material. 
you know, black on black jump, man. Uh, I'm curious to hear your opinions. I, I really want to hear everyone's opinion on this shoe today, whether you're watching on the playback or live with me right now, right after now. A oh, shout out to J Star 23, 25, by the way. Excuse me. Uh, he went live yesterday and, and he was one of the first YouTubers along with me and, you know, Fran and um, um, Jumpman, Bostick and Sneak Geeks. He, he, he was one of them. And um, I don't think he ever gets his credit. And I was met, talking about him a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a week ago. And I was saying now, he, he, this guy really was the first dude to really point out the real and the fake stuff. Um, and I'm on my, my YouTube, just scrolling, seeing what, what the hell's going on, who's live. Cause I enjoy watching people's lives. That's my thing. I, I like hanging out and, and listening to what people are saying and everything's real time. So it's like, it, things hit the fan, you know, like things could happen just like that. So it's funny. It's TV, right? This is like the new TV for me. Uh, I see JSTAR23 on my timeline live. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Is this real? I click on it. And, and, and he was literally talking about me when I jumped in the chat. So I'm like, this is interesting. And when you, when you jump into someone's video and you're a content creator and you hear someone talking about you, and this ain't the first time this has happened, you always have that kind of um, vibe where you're like, I'm wondering what this MF forgot to say about me, right? I didn't think it was going to say anything bad, but it's just curious. Maybe he, they would say something negative. Maybe they're going to say something positive. What, what do they think about you when it's in the public? It's an interesting thing when you hear people talk about you in public and they don't even know you're watching them. That's what's interesting about YouTube. And even like someone like Ron, Ron's alter ego, he, he's not, you know, a YouTube personality. He does cam up from time to time. I mean, and he's, he says, by the way, that um, these fives are weak. Look at the tongue. Yeah, I mean, it's it's stupid to me. I agree. And Malcolm, shout out to Malcolm. He said, um, don't like this five. He says, yeah, I remember Jay Star. So, yeah, you know, it's an interesting vibe. You walk in and you're hearing someone speak to you. It's it's like if if you ever go to a bar and you hear a bunch of people talking about you, like, um, you know, it's just, you know, they're not saying nothing bad about you because you're going to meet up with them. But you're just interesting to hear what they got to say. You know what I mean? He says, Dell's a sadistic, <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> Shalom. So, so I walk in and, and, and he had nice things to say about me. You know what I mean? And once again, I didn't think he was going to say anything negative. But, but it's just, it's always interesting to hear what other people are thinking about you. You know what I mean? Um, it's almost like you ever think of like what people would say about you at your um, funeral, like, you know, when people talk about you, it, that's the kind of vibe it gets because because you hear what people are thinking and, and, it, and it really is the truth when you when they think you're not around. You know what I mean? Um, and he had nice things to say. And then I said, yo, what's up? What's good? And he he popped, you know, he was like, yo, it's all this is awesome. You hear Bull, Bull came through, Bullet RC came through, um, Tony D came through. And uh, a lot of people came through. TCM came through or TMC. I forget. I always get his thing messed up. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. I, I, Henry came through. I mean, before you know, there was a lot of cre uh, creators that came through. And it, it's just interesting. It, it was it was fun. He started reminiscing of all the like crazy YouTubers, the, the, the whack pack, I'll, I'll call them. Um, that were just always about the controversy and all that crap. Um, and they were the OGs of controversy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and it was so fun to watch this. My wife was next to me while I was watching and uh, she remembered, she said, Dribbles the God. I remember that, that guy. He was always um, trying to fight everyone, you know? And uh, she was even laughing because she hasn't heard those names in like over 10 years. Uh, I forgot some of the other guys' names. Uh, Frat, what's his name? Frey, Frey Dog, Frey Dog. They, he was talking about Frey Dog. Um, and Frey Dog was always really nice to me. He would send me sneakers all the time. 
Um, sometimes he gave them to me as gifts. Sometimes he would um, give them to me for amazing deals, like absolutely amazing deals. I, I remember we tr I traded, I think, a pair of OG Jordans for the band Jordan ones. And I'm talking about the band ones with the X in the back. That was only at the at the retail um, the the Nike outlets, excuse me. So uh, it it was it was a fun fun stream yesterday. Uh, shout out to J Star. He looks good. Pause. He looks healthy, um, and, and I'm I'm happy for him. That was that was very cool yesterday. I would like to see. Um, well, you know who else would be MIA that I would like to see would be basically Sneak Geeks. I think it would be fun for Sneak Geeks to go live. Um, as far as the whack pack, um, and I don't mean whack pack, like they are whack. I mean, like they're wacky, like wacky, you know what I'm saying? They are definitely wacky in my opinion, because anyone that's just always looking for, for drama, it's some wacky shit to me. Like, uh, this, this thing we do here is about sneakers and, um, J star was even saying it was funny how, um, this one dude, I think it was um, Frey Dog, he was saying heaters over beaters. And uh, he was like, so what are you saying? Like, don't wear your sneakers? Like, he, he was, just, it was funny. He Because he's got this personality to him that, that's really funny. Um, and we were talking about hip hop for a while. It, it was a blast. I had a really good time yesterday. Yesterday was fun. Um, we went over the Zayas chat and there was this debate on who, Who's the better uh, rapper and who got the better hits um, and who's going to win this battle, which is just days away. Jeezy versus, um, yeah, Sneaker Freaker. Yeah, yeah, I remember him, man. He used to imitate me all the time, too, man. Uh, he was a funny guy, man, uh, Sneaker Freaker. He, he's been gone for a long time, too. Um, once in a while, I see him drop in the comments. Once in a while, he'll drop a comment on a, on a video. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to him too, man. Um, damn, I just lost my train of thought what I was talking about. Shit. Uh, man, damn, my brain is fried. I'm, I'm fried. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, we're talking about Jeezy versus Gucci Mane. So, um, we were having this debate and it really wasn't even the debate. Everyone thought that Jeezy was going to win. Maybe a couple of people thought that, um, that uh, Gucci Man was going to take it. But after Zay playing all the songs from Gucci, I, I just don't think he could hang. I don't think he could hang with uh, Jeezy at all. I, I really don't. And and I love Gucci Man. Like, yo, you can literally search DJ Dell's Gucci Man and you're going to see mixtapes I've done, you know, of him. Like, I've done mixtapes of him. Like, like, I've done work. You know what I mean? I, I've supported Gucci. I even did a Gucci... R&B mixtape, all the features from Gucci Mane throughout the years. It was a dope mixtape. Um, you know, I, I just, um, I don't think that he got the the bangers, the absolute bangers uh, that <laughs> he, Jeezy has, like, his catalog is sick. You know what I mean? Like, if you really think about all the, the smash hits that Jeezy has, and and Jeezy's smash hits are hard records too. It's not like he's like, you know, super commercial and like he's been putting out hard records, but they become commercial because they so fire. The production's dope. I mean, um, we were listening to even like Go Getter with R. Kelly. And I, I know we hear R. Kelly and we're like this, like, you know what I mean? Like, get away, you know what I mean? But like that beat was hard. Go Getter was not like a soft beat, like um you know, piano and guitars playing and some pretty sounds. Like, Go Get It was hard. It was one of these, you know what I mean? It was one of these hard-ass beats in the club. And um, and even Jeezy's voice is is graspy. So, like, um, you can't even be like, you know, like, oh, that's commercial. And, and some heads were saying, you know, that, oh, well, his songs are all old. But the versus battle is all about, it's all about, right? Your catalog versus their catalog. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about, you know? Let's see. What about, yeah, we mentioned Sneak Geeks. I'd like to see him live. Um, but J-Star said something that was interesting, and I agree with him. J-Star said, I don't think he was ever really a true sneakerhead. He just was looking at it, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, looking at it kind of to capitalize 
on this market and it was so open at the time um i don't know if that's true or not i, I kind of lean toward what what jay star saying though because you don't see nothing with the shoes anymore you know uh sneakers is a lifestyle like I, I can understand stopping collecting and, and buying crazy shoes all the time, but I will be, if I live to 80, 90 years old, uh, I hope I do. That'd be dope. Um, I still will be buying, you know, Jordans. It may not be every effing release, but I'm still going to have a dope pair of kicks. It's part of my life. I like wearing fire pairs of kicks. It's footwear though. At the end of the day, shoes. I'm not going to be like, okay, well, I'm 60 years old or even 50 years old and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm 50. Um, I'm not going to wear dope shoes anymore. I'm going to wear like Walmart sneakers or, or, or some some trash um, Nike shoes like that you see at, at Gabe's or uh, Ross for Less. Like, no, I'm still going to be rocking hot fire flames on my feet. It's part of my life, you know. Th that's just what I do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm not going to have, I guarantee you by the time I hit 50, I'm not going to have, you know, 400 pairs of shoes, you know, like I'm nowhere near 50 and I'm already thinking like, uh, maybe I'm going to slim down the collection a little bit just because it's, it's a little, a, a, a little much, you know what I'm saying? When you have that many kids, but, um, you would think sneaky still copping sneakers. If he really was like a big sneakerhead, he's still going to buy shoes, you know? And I think Jay Star, if I'm not mistaken, was saying, "Yeah, I'm not crazy. I'm not, I don't go crazy like I used to." But I think he pulled out a pair of Yeezys. He's like, "I'm about that comfort now," you know. It's interesting, man. Um, and people fall up, fall out of stuff. But me, I love sneakers. Like I've always loved sneakers. The only reason why I wasn't wearing Jordans as a kid, I couldn't afford Jordans as a kid. You know, like that's just what it was. Uh, but once I was able to buy Jordans, I'm, I'm buying them. You know, I'm, I'm not going to exactly. I'm not going to convert to Air, Mo, Air uh, Monarch threes because oh well, I am now this age and I should not be wearing these shoes no more. Now I'm not going to be jumping out the window 50 years old wearing um what the fives like no. But you will see me in a pair of fire red fives, fire red fours, you know, infrared sixes, like the OG shit, you know. I'm going to be doing that. Why wouldn't I? Your cool gray video, a women's just got in, was watching your cool. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you, man. When you watch these videos, leave your comments too, please. I, I want to know how, how you feel it, man. I want to know what you guys are thinking. I'm, I'm trying to connect with you all, you know, individually and, and vibe out. Yeah, Jeezy and Mariah had a hit too. I mean, yo. That was Ron. Ron, you were getting in on Tony. It was so funny. Um, Tony, you know what it is about Tony? Tony is a he's very passionate about um, Gucci Man. I think. I think he just he's a big fan of Gucci Man. Kind of like how I am with Nas. Like you can't tell me nothing negative about Nas. You can say, oh, his beat selection sucks. I've heard that in the past. You can say he fell off after his second album. You can tell me all that shit. I'm gonna. I will never agree with you because Nas is my favorite rapper and one of my favorite rappers. So I think that um, Tony D, he just, he wasn't trying to hear that. He's just, he's ride or die for, for his guy. You know what I'm saying? He, that's one of his favorites. You could tell he was very passionate about Gucci and, and I, I'm not mad at it, you know? Dr. Schultz, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna, he says, I'm gonna be 70 and some dope kicks. He says, might have to switch the insults to Dr. Schultz. <laughs> Dude, man, that's the thing though, man. We love shoes. It, it's it's not like an age thing, it's a passion thing, you know? Um, it's like, like I'm gonna wear what I love, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna, it's clothing and, and, and it represents me. And, and I just never understand that. Oh, I can't be wearing Jordans no more. I'm 35. Like, dude, are you F? I have friends that say that. And I'm like, dog, what? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? You're 35? What, what are you trying to say? Like, you got Kanye West, for Christ's sakes. He's like 45 years old and people dressing like him. Do you listen to Jada and Fab? Um, they're dope as of course I do, man. Of course I do. I did a mixtape with with Fabulous. D 
Do you guys ever notice my promo in the beginning? The promo I play in the beginning got fabulous in it. And Jeezy. Boy, Young Jizzle, nigga, y'all know what it is, man. DJ Dales. Peace, man. What's up, y'all? This is Common, and right now you're checking out DJ Dales. Stay in tune with him, all right? DJ Dales, absolutely wonderful. What it do, what it does, the kid. Mr. R.I.P. himself. Low so case you ain't no so rockin' with DJ Dales. You see that? Oh, I didn't mean to disrespect Nick. R.I.P., man. And these were all at events or at the actual studio. When Jeezy, when I was in the studio with Jeezy, he played me his whole second album. Like I was in the studio while he was playing the whole album. You know what I'm saying? Like literally the whole entire album. He was going through all the tracks. We were in Midtown Manhattan. We were at Sony Studio, matter of fact. That's where we were. We were at Sony. I. I, I think some people don't know, man. I used to put in that work with, with music like crazy. Uh, he says, Tom says, I'm 54 years old and I still wear them. I have 150. Why wouldn't you? They're sneakers. We've got to wear shoes, right? We, we walking barefoot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand that, man. Of course not, man. He ain't the king of New York. Sheesh. How can you even how can you even say that when you got heads like Benny the Butcher out? Conway the Machine. You know? You got movements with West Side Gun just taking over, man. That's like blasphemy to even ask that. <laughs> he gotta be from the West Coast or just a huge fan of, of Kendrick. And where the hell's Kendrick been too, man? You know, where the hell has Kendrick been? I can't call it, man. Guys, if you could do me a solid, if you're walking in here, just smash the thumbs up button for me, please. Please. And of course, you can always send the donos. Those are always greatly appreciated, of course. But the thumbs up, it takes one second. It's free. Show that love. He said, had to ask you, bro. I, I know you love Griselda. I love Griselda. That's all I listen to is Griselda, man. I love Griselda, man. I was so upset when I heard that um that Benny got shot. I was like, my heart just went, oh, my God, God, don't tell me they're taking him away from us. Like, uh, Because he's so fire. He puts great music out, man. He, this guy's helped me get through this year, man, for real. The, all of these guys. Pray for Paris, one of my favorite albums of the year, man. I love Pray for Paris. His other albums were okay to me. They weren't tight like Pray for Paris. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, man. The, the other new albums he came out with, the other two from West Side Guard, I, I wanted something tighter. Pause. Uh, but Pray for Paris is a masterpiece. I bought all the hoodies. I, bought, <laughs> I went crazy for Pray, Pray for Paris. I bought the CD. Uh, it, it's, one, it's one of my favorite albums. I may even put it up there better better than um, Benny the Butcher's album. It's just, it's a masterpiece, the piece of art to me. Piece of art to me. Uh, it's uh, so good, man. Uh, but but he began to, like, to me, he gets too carried away and, and gets so left field with it that it, it kind of, it sonically, it kind of is like, it, it don't work. Um, if he could just stay in the pocket of Pray for Paris, like, I, that would be perfect for me. because because he just is, he's, it's just enough of everything that West Side Gun does. Um, I've watched reviews from Needle Drop. What's the guy with the glasses? What's his name? Something Fonta Fontino or Fontano, um, the busiest internet music nerd. You ever watch him do his music reviews? And, and he never gives West Side Gun any um, praise, really, um, or Griselda. You don't really like Griselda. I, I never could understand that. I can understand some of the stuff he said about West Side Gun, but Pray for Paris, I, when I watched his review on Pray for Paris, I couldn't believe it because because I was blown away when I heard Pray for Paris from West Side. I was like, yo, this is this is it. And I would listen to it over and over again. But my girl, 
my girl would be around me and be like, yo, this sucks. Like, she'd be like, what are you listening to? All I hear is he sound like he's whining and crying. And um, she'd make fun of it. And some of my other friends would say, ah, he's all right. You know, uh, I don't like his voice. But, you know, you got to get used to the voice. Once you get used to the voice, he says, nah, yeah, you know who Fantano is. Anthony Fantano. I think it's Anthony Fantano. Um, yeah, he'd be hating, right? You watch. See, I don't watch YouTube, like sneaker YouTube like that. I just started watching uh, the Section 8 because it's entertaining. Like, it's like it's like a live soap opera, you know what I mean? It's almost like a, a wrestling promo soap opera. Everyone's cutting promos on everyone. So I find it to be fun to watch. Uh, but, you know, I don't really watch sneaker reviews. Uh, I, I know what a sneaker looks like. I'm pretty good at explaining shoes. I've been doing it for a long time. So I watch music reviews like that guy. But he be hating at times, Anthony Fantano. I think it's Anthony Fantano, um, Needle Drop. He be... But but he does know his music. I appreciate when he reviews other types of music. Like he, I think he did one where he went through all the Metallica albums. I really enjoyed that one. Uh, but something with Griselda, he like he was kind of he, like it was weird when he when he reviewed the um, the Conway the Machine album. It was real weird because he was like praising it, but then pulling back his praise and kind of saying it. And he's still, you know, it's still not there, kind of. That was what I was getting from it. But I thought Conway the Machines album was tight. It had a lot of different flavors to it. Not not just the typical hard punching vibes, you know. Um, it was a great album. It was super tight. Uh, I consider his album from a king to a god just as good as um Betty the Butcher's album. And, but I think that Betty the Butcher's album got more praise because he's like, it's like he's getting pushed harder. Um, I don't know if it's maybe, it may be people, I'm, I'm not trying to be insensitive. It may be because of um, Conway's look maybe because, you know, he's got the, what's it called again? What is mouse to the side like that? I, I And I don't mean that no cap, but I think some people can't get over that. So they like, they rather rock with um, Benny. But I'm over that. But I think Conway raps just as good as Benny the Butcher, maybe even better, maybe even better. Um, and I, I don't understand why people people um, praise Benny more than Conway the Machine. It, it's mind boggling to me. It's it's absolutely mind boggling to me. Um, West Side Gun smashes features, and yes, uh, Pray for Paris is the best album of the year. West Side Gun is unique. Have to support the whole Griselda team if we want a change in hip hop. Yes. And that's why I was saying, like, I was like, yo, when I heard Benny got it, like, got hit, I was like, oh, God, please don't say. Because, you know, people have been being taken out like crazy the past couple of weeks. It's, it's been out of control, especially in, you know, in Texas. It's been craziness. Dope, bro. Dope. No one can mess with the old school rap scene. Mob Deep. Yeah, Mob Deep is great. Rest in peace to... Um, my boy, prodigy man, damn! I still can't believe that he that you know he's no longer with us. Um, cool cat, man. Had the pleasure of meeting him a bunch of times, hanging out with him. I hung out with him at summer jam. It was so funny, man. We snuck in this big gallon of henny, um, and then they took it away from us when we were walking around. <laughs> Security grabbed it from us. I was, we were trying to figure out how to sneak in this gallon of Henny, all of us. It was me, Big Noid. Um, who else was there? My boy, Freddie Figs was there. Freddie Figaro. Uh, Freddie Figs, he used to work for MTV. And we went in there and, and um, what I did was, this was right around when Jada Kiss Y, the Y song came out and they were giving out t-shirts. And they, it said why, but it had the, the Puerto Rican flag because, you know, Summer Jam be, really, be coming out around the, when the Puerto Rican Day Parade comes. I was like, yo, this shirt's fire. And um, this dude that does promo, this guy General, he was like, yo, Del, was like, all I got is like big sizes now, bro. He was like, I got a 5X, you know. Um, I was like, I'll take that, man, you know. So I took it because I thought maybe I could like hook someone up with it or something like that or just have it as a collector's item. Um, so what I did was I grabbed the shirt 
And what I did was I put the the henny, I grabbed the nozzle, I tucked it to the side of my um my shorts. And then what I did was I draped this big 5XT on the side of me. So when we went through the detectors to get searched and everything like that, through the side entrance, they patted us down so lightly. And I put my arms kind of like folded like that. And he, he ended up just patting my arm instead of my hip. So I was able to walk in with that bottle of Henny. Um, it, was, it was a huge gallon of Henny. Um, and we were chilling, man. That, that was a good memory, man. Um, really, I do that. I can't believe we snuck it in. Um, but yeah, man, we were just walking around Chicago in the bottle of Henny, just passing a bottle of Henny around while we were walking around Summer Jam. And then the security took it from one of us that you know either someone snitched on us or um they 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 caught you know us because we were just walking freely like we own the joint you know what i'm saying <laughs> like like um prodigy uh prodigy had a gang of people with him man he had a lot of people with him i think godfather part three was with us too man um salute to all those guys salute to the infamous mob too man uh, but that was that was an amazing memory man and it's funny because you know I was a kid when I was listening to Mob Deep, and I was still pretty young when that happened. But um, it's crazy, like you know, you're you're with these people you used to just like idolize. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's insane. You know, you're like, damn, man, it's like everything's coming full circle. Pause. You know, uh, he says, yeah, I put Henny in a twenty ounce Coke, mix it up. I like Henny straight up. No ice, no mix, just straight up, right from the bottle or a, or a rocks glass. Nothing in it. I don't like it cold. I, I it actually pisses me off when I when I have to. You know, some people be putting henny in the freezer or in the refrigerator. Like, I actually get a, a little bit agitated when I see that. Um, it's supposed to, you're supposed to drink um, cognac warm. No ice, no nothing. You can mix. It's a mix or two with some with some soda, you know. But if you're gonna drink it straight up, I don't like it. I like it, damn what, warm, hot, neat, however you call it. That's what's up, bro. Salute to you. Let's see. Yeah, classic, man. Why? Yeah. Yeah, man. That dude, man, I, you know, we we had our ways back then, bro. We had our ways back then. And we used to always do that. We also we used to always do that, man. You get the the get the small bottle, you know, the small bottles are easy to to sneak through, but that gallon, I I mean, dude, everyone was like, "Yo, I don't know how you just did that, man." Um, but but it was crazy. I was always good at maneuvering around security. Um, I remember once I, I showed um, Sticky Fingers how to maneuver. I think we were going to Club Exit, and I showed him how to maneuver after um, Hip Hop Honors. And he was like, yo, this is crazy. He, you know, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't believe it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we were always able to maneuver. There's, there, was, there used to be easy ways to maneuver. You know what I mean? We used to, when we were, when we were broke, we used to sneak into the clubs. What we used to do is, right, we, what we would do is help the DJ. We grab, when they had records still, see, Serato messed it all up. By, by the time Serato came out, I had some pull, and there was other ways to sneak in the clubs. But we had different ways to sneak in the clubs. One way would be, you see the DJ be like, yo, it, it was an old school trick that was passed on from generations to generations until Serato came out where they didn't need help. So we, what you would do is you would just go and, and be like, yo, let me help you with these crates. And if you tell the DJ that, they knew what you were doing. You were trying to sneak into the club. So I was doing that when I was underage. Like me and a couple of my friends would go and we would, we would wait till the DJ pulls up. You know, they pull up in the truck and we help the DJs go into the club um, through the side door. And we carry the crates in. Once you carry the crate in, you in the club for free. And you if you don't have the ID, you in the club. You know, and a lot of gangsters used to do that, too. They'd help them in, you know, and keep the piece, throw the piece in the, in the uh, crate and then go in there. You know, that that was a, a, the way to, to sneak that in. Or if you had the hawk with you or something like that, you know. So that's what you would do to get in there. 
And then like them like big VIP parties back in the days, like I've got a lot of my connections sneaking into the clubs. Like there would be industry events on like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They would always have like the big industry, like record release parties or or listening events. And so when I first started DJing, a lot of people were like, yo, how did you connect with all these people? One thing I used to do, there was this dude from Queens, my boy Mikey Bottles. And we figured this thing out, man. What you do is you wait till the celebrities are about to hit the door and they always have an entourage. So what you do is you just say, what's up? And then walk in with the entourage. A lot of times the entourage, some of these guys don't even know each other. So you just roll up in there with them and you go right into the club. I mean, you know, you going into these industry parties where it's nothing but celebs and rappers. And then you're in there and then I go, yo, I'm DJ Dells. Who? They don't know who the hell I am, but by the end of the night, they do. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they like, I give them my mixtape. Not the end of the night. The next day, I'll give them my mixtape. And then they hear it. They end up throwing it in the car because it wouldn't be like a demo, like where it'd be like, oh, I'm, D I'm MC Dells or something. It would be like a mixtape with all the new shit. So they'd be like, yo, I got to listen to this when I get in the car. So then they would bump it in the car and then they hit me up the next day. Yo, come through, you know. Um, to this studio or, or Electric Lady or, or one of these studios, and then they slide me the, the exclusives. That's how I, I started getting like exclusives when I used to do the mixtapes. And even when I used to just go to hang out, when I'd go and grab the DJ, um, the the um, the crates. What we used to do is you snatch the bottles from VIP, right? Because we were, you know, we didn't have money to buy that when we were young. I'm talking when I was like 16, 17 years old. We'd sneak into like all types of clubs, the tunnel, when the tunnel was popping. So what we do is we, when we wait until people ain't paying attention, me and my friends go and snatch the bottle, bro, right from the freaking, where people were standing. Sometimes, yo, I got, yo, my dude, uh, shout out to my boy, Amori. Yo, he, I seen him once, he snatched the bottle right from the bar. Like he, he was, he once, there was like a stairway, I forgot what club it was, but he was able to reach. He would grab like, you know, like, any bottle that he could reach, he grabbed it when the bartender wasn't looking and just sneak it. And then, bong, you have a full bottle of liquor. We, we like, you know, heads are young. They don't give a damn. You know what I mean? And, and this is New York City, man. This is like real. This is real New York City life right here, man. The club, how to get into the clubs. Now, I don't, you can't do that no more. I don't think, you know. But um, back in the days was fun, man. It was, it was crazy times, man. Really good times. We used to do that in the Bronx too. Like, like um, I remember when I was like 14, 15, we we go into like some of these uh, spots in the Bronx, like over by um Van Cortland Park, and 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 I don't condone this. This is just how it was back then. Well, I was like 15, 16. Uh, we go into these spots. We had the little fake jump off. And there would be mad girls there because there was um, Manhattan College right by Van Cortland Park. So what we do is we go into these spots like Characters. There was a bar Characters, the Terminal. There would be mad girls there. And um, so you go in there and you see mad people from Manhattan College. And Manhattan College, you got to be rich to be in Manhattan College, man. There's a lot of money out there. So you go there. They're the dance floor. They're the big bar. And you, they would have a jacket rack, right? So you go in there with no jacket, and then you go on your way out. When you're leaving, you go and you look for the flyest jacket, the, the sick, you know, goose or the or polo joint or something crazy that looked fresh, that looked new. We just roll out with that and just, you know, we we have a new jacket every other week, man. Like, my jacket collection was crazy. So, you know... <laughs> And we were young. We like 15 years old. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know if I was wearing Jordan still at that time, man. Like, I was wearing Adidas and stuff like that, man. But we boost all types of stuff back then. But I don't condone it now. It's just, you know, it's the nature of the beast back then, you know? But uh, just wild shit back in the day. Check Nori's IG or Conway's IG. They both talking ish. Both got up from the tape. What? No, stop it. Okay, we'll do that right now. Uh, make sure to hit the thumbs up button, man. I'm vibing with y'all. Show some love, please. 
I'm looking at the thumbs up. You're breaking my heart right now. Let's let's do this. I just gave y'all with with my Patreon exclusive. My Patreon podcast is basically what you're hearing. It's like a lot of. I don't know why my computer's tripping. My computer's really tripping right now. What the hell's going on here? I can't even type anything. Oh no, something's going on with my keyboard. Yeah, we, we used to do all types of wild stuff, man. We, like little maneuvers, you know? And that, that ain't even the half. Like we would maneuver like crazy though. It's good times, you know? Good times, bad times, you know? And my children, watch this. Don't be doing that shit. It's not right. I didn't have parents around me raising me. I'm not even kidding. Like I, I didn't have like my mom and dad raising me. I barely seen them. Like I, I wasn't raised properly. Like, unfortunately, I wasn't. So if you got a mommy and daddy around and you're doing that type of stuff, you need to stop that. I wasn't raised right. No lie. I, I wasn't raised right. I was basically raised by myself. I'm trying to get something's wrong. I think my computer, my my computer's tripping right now. I think because I haven't reset it, like restarted it in a hot minute. I'm trying to type shit on my keyboard. My keyboard is like dead right now. This is aggravating. I did a whole video doing that, George. But yeah, the Cherry 12s need to re-release. Olympic 6s definitely need to release. Um, I want to see the Midnight Navies release. Conway. Let's see this. Conway. I'm going to get on my IG. Oh. Whoa, wait, wait. Whoa. Whoa. Holy. Whoa. Oh, man. Dude. Dude. Yo. Is this a work? Are they working on us? Dog. Yo, shout out to Tragedy Gaddafi. Shout out to Nori. Both those dudes have shown me extreme love throughout the years. Pause. Like, they, they've literally been on my YouTube channel. Like, Nori's been on this channel talking sneakers. Real talk. He's been here. Search. Nori, DJ Dells, and he was with Joel Ortiz. On this channel, we were talking about Reebok um, donks, Reebok on um, pumps. Excuse me. Dyslexia. He was on this effing channel, man. Check that out. Yeah, man, we just got to adapt, though, bro, you know? I mean, and I don't even blame my parents, man. I don't. You know, um, some of you may not know, when I was five years old, my mother was was a, had a stroke, man. She was half paralyzed. She couldn't barely walk. She could barely do anything. My father had to work all the time, man. So, like, I was raised by, like, no one, you know what I mean? Because no one was around. So everything about me, I learned basically from myself or knuckleheads. Few good people taught me right. You know, so, you know, it, it is what it is, man. So let's get into this talk. Oh, my God. So, all right. So Nori and Traj, Tragedy Gaddafi, man, they, you know, these guys have a history together. And they had a bump in the road, we'll say, right? And I'm going to be honest with you. 
Dallas can drop a link. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can drop a link. No, I can't. My computer is acting up. And I don't want to end the stream right here. I, I need to reset set my computer, restart my computer. So um, they were cool. Then they had that bump in the road, right? And Tragic Gaddafi, you know, he, he's been rapping for a long time, man. Um, before he was Tragic Gaddafi, little trivia. Let me see if you know who, who Tragic Gaddafi was before he was Tragedy. And shout out to Tragic Tragedy is, is the man. He's got a lot of dope music, man. One of my favorite records is the record he did with uh with uh Cormega. That was a stupid. He they did a few joints, but that one joint, um, I forgot what it was called, man. He had like a real melodic, chilled out beat. It was sick, sick record. It's one 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 of Mega's early albums, or it may have been on Trage's album actually. I'm I'm trying to think. But regardless, they had a bump in the road. And on um, this new Drink, Drink Champs episode, you have um, Conway and you have Tragedy on Drink Champs. And man, you got Tragedy. Yes, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. There you go, Craig. Is that the Craig G? The, the Craig G, Craig G? That may be the Craig G, Craig G. If it is, salute to you. Legend. I know Craig G was what um, watches the show. I don't know if that's the Craig G. Craig G. I've been trying to get the real Craig G on the show for probably five years. I think it's um, over the Nori buying back the War Report Masters. And I'll tell you, man, Tragic was a big part of that War Report album, man. Um, it's kind of like. You know, when I look at Tragedy on the War Report album, I, I kind of look at it almost to the line of Ghostface's uh, purple tape. You know, with, uh, I mean, Raekwon's purple tape. <laughs> you like what I did right there? <laughs> Sometimes the dyslexia actually makes things fly, though. And that's no cap, too, to Raekwon. But Ghostface was nearly on every track, you know? Oh, he says, nah, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know your hip hop then. Salute to you. I respect that. Okay. That's right. That's facts, George. Salute to you on that. Damn, I'm really aggravated that we can't do a reaction. I may do a re. Nah, but it's not a natural reaction no more. So that's whack. I can't be doing no fake reactions. And shout out to Capone, man. That's my guy, too. Um, matter of fact, because of Capone got me in uh, my first magazine. I did a mixtape hosted by Capone. And shout out to Dan Green, man, over at Koch, because he plugged that in. I know some of these guys be watching these shows, so. I'm not trying to, like, be like Mr. Cool, shout out people. Even though half of you guys don't even. And I don't mean Nori and Capone I'm talking about like other people. Man, that was crazy. Do you think they're trolling us? I don't think so. I don't think they would do that, but. Hey, yo, this is crazy. Man, I ain't seen y'all niggas together in years. Yeah, I heard the new boss down. But I'm, some of the songs were old, though, man. Like that, that Eminem song, that was an old record, dude. That was an old record. Oh, yeah, Pone is wild, man. Cool cat, though, man. Man. So when does this episode come on? We need to see this. Damn. What did Nori say? 
I need to read what he wrote on this joint. Hey, yo, this crazy. Oh, wow. He said that they got him in the middle of some BS. That's what Nori said. From king to a god to referee. <laughs> Conway wasn't ready. <laughs> oh, my God. He says, tragedy, um, intelligent hoodlum. Uh, and Buffalo's finest, Conway the Machine, this week. That's oh, I can't wait to watch that. Yeah, I don't be on IG like that, man. I don't be on IG like that. Real talk, I don't. So, yeah, they could be they could be trolling. You know, Nori ain't dumb, right? He put, I think Nori sometimes played the dumb guy, but he ain't that dumb. You know, he be like, yo, I'm stupid. I don't even know how to say words. And listen. I think that Nori plays, plays the role as the dumb guy because it's good to play the role as the dumb guy. You know, I can't even pronounce this stuff. Um, Nori ain't stupid. He knows what he knows how to get an audience or else he wouldn't even be where he's at right now in life. Because if you think about it, Norby, Joe Bonnins, they they totally, you know, remarketed themselves and um, they did something amazing. They're they're crushing it. And Joe, I just finished watching this morning Joe Bonnins, uh podcast with with uh, with Westside. That was a dope interview, man. Yeah. But these Queens dudes began busy, man. So you know. You never know, man. And 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 when it's someone that you got love for, things happen, man. It, 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 you know, there's that old saying: "There's a thin line between love and hate." So you you know you can see someone that you got love for, and and, and sometimes things just happen. You know, sometimes sometimes it happens. Maybe it's a full moon, man. <laughs> maybe maybe the aura is just off. You know, <laughs> things just things just turn turn sideways. Turn upside down. Things happen sometimes. No. I think we're going to get up out of here, though, man. Uh, if you guys have any super chats with some questions, now's the time to leave and we'll kick it a little longer. If not, that's fine. We're going to bounce. Um, and I'll be back probably later. Uh, let me know in the comments. And, and you can't leave a comment right now because I think the video, if you try, leave it in the comments. Let me know, do you want me to do just an unboxing of this uh, Air Jordan What the Five live? Or you want the traditional review, bird's eye view? Because, because you know, I, I'm beginning to feel like y'all don't care about the reviews anymore. I'm beginning to feel that way. Y'all just like the live streams, the, the long live streams pause. That's like, um, you know, an hour or so. Y'all like that. It's just something you could play. I know some of you don't even watch it. You just listen to it. And you see here, this is my Twitter. Follow my Twitter. I'm always posting great deals and steals. So make sure you follow that Twitter um, and my IG. Uh, you're missing out if you're not following my Twitter. I'm here to help you. Uh, there's great deals going on. I have linked in the description box below. Once again, this Undertaker Funko Pop, this is going to be worth some money, I think, in a couple of years. You want to pick this one up. Um, and it's dope. So pick that up. That's linked below. And there's also the Nike Adapt, the cool gray one. Under retail, I think it's $250, bro. $250. It's a great deal. $250? Definitely a great deal. I don't think it's fake. However, it goes down between New York dudes. Um when I was younger, I was in the studio in uh, VA with DJ Les and DJ Silk. Um, it got it got crazy. Okay, traditional high video quality reviews for that pair. I got you. I'm gonna do that today. I, you know, I paid the two day shipping. Uh, I'm waiting for Ron. What he's gonna say next? I'm waiting for it. But yeah, I paid the two day shipping. Right? When did those things drop? It's a little bit ago. They still haven't. Sh they still haven't shipped it to me yet. If you're paying for five, if you're paying, I don't care if it's five dollars. If I'm paying for the two-day shipping, you need to ship it to me in the two days, man. 
for Christ's sakes. What up? What up, beloved? That's a, that annoys me, man. This is the second time I, I paid extra for the two-day shipping from sneakers, and then they do me dirty like that. Pause. Unbelievable. Do I think that M and Westside are going to start beefing? Nah. He don't want Eminem don't want that kind of smoke too. Like I'm not saying West Side Girl is a better rapper than him, but but everyone look at Griselda is like the dopest stuff out. That that's the new wave, and, and Eminem Eminem want to be a part of these waves. Look, Eminem signed them guys just like how Jay Z signed State Property. You know they they all they, there it goes. I was waiting for that. That's what I was waiting for. Jay Z was getting old. He signed state property. He's hanging around them. He's trying to catch all the new waves, the new slang, all that stuff. You know, just like M. He what a good way to keep his ear in the streets by signing a new hot artist. You know what I mean? This is what these execs, these top dogs do. That's why you'll see them sign these guys and then they go. You know, they trying to keep keep around these people. You know, to get that energy, that vibe. Look. Eminem didn't even put out no music for how long? He signed West Side Gun and Conway, and then what happened? He put out like two albums back to back. You know? It's what they do, man, a lot of these dudes. Man, Nori need to stop playing and put that interview out. When's that come out? Tomorrow? I think it come out tomorrow. I want to watch that. I'm going to be watching this like four more times. I want to I wanna watch their body body language. Because uh, I feel like, I, I don't know, I feel like it, this is, I don't know if this is 100% real or not, man. Um, but yeah, man, I hope these guys are able to, you know, get something positive out of the conversation. Maybe they need to just scrap, you know? They're old friends, maybe they need to just throw them. How, how Gucci made survive. <laughs> Oh, you are crazy. Jay is trash. <laughs> what the? Come on, man. You need Q-tips, bro. You need to put some hydrogen peroxide in your ears, brother. If you're going to say that that Jay-Z is hot trash can water, jeez. Good Lord. Oh, okay. L-E-S, the producer. Okay. I got what you're saying now. That's dope. Shout out to L.E.S. I don't know him very well, but legend. <laughs> All right, y'all. We've been here for over an hour. I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you for coming through. Um, appreciate you all, man. And um, I'll be back probably later. We'll see how it goes down. We'll see when these damn sneakers get delivered to the casa, man. But, yeah, you know what you do is if you pay the, the, um, the two-day shipping, what you do is once they ship the shoe, just hit them up on the, or you can even hit them up on the messenger. You go to Nike's website, you hit them on the messenger, you copy and paste your um, your order number and you tell them, yo, I paid two day shipping and, you, and it's been like five days with the fluck. And what they do is they'll just refund you the five bucks. You know, they'll refund you the five bucks. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you being there. Jay Z is the best rap, and I, I, I'm going Nas, bro. Nas, Nas rap circles around Jay Z. Um, I'm just kidding. You don't rap circles around Jay, but I, I just, I'm, I'm a Nas guy. Been listening to, to both lives today, grinding in the 18 wheeler. Gonna try to watch the next one. Salute to you, bro. Salute to you. Thank you for coming through, Frozen Yeti. Love seeing you all, man. For real. That's right. Peace and peace and love, peace and blessings. We're gonna be back though. Uh, we'll be back probably later. Uh, I'm gonna do the review. I think I'm gonna do the review. Give you the bird, 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 <laughs> bird side view and all that. GG, what up, GG? Um, yeah, we'll do that later. If you're watching from the beginning, from the like the middle, or you're just walking in now, watch the stream from the beginning. I actually talked a little bit about my my life. You know, as when I was young, young, dumb. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a fun, fun vid. I actually shared a little sum with you all. Um, my, it's my Patreon is where you could really learn a lot about me. I have hilarious stories, 
um, crazy stories, which I don't want to share here on the internet. Um, once in a while, I'll give you a little something. But yeah, join the Patreon over 120 episodes of crazy, fun stories, um, stuff that you're not going to find on the internet unless you join the Patreon. And we do Q&A and anything goes. Anything goes. So it, it will. It gets wild at times, some of the stuff I've been talking about. <laughs> and we're going to see what's going on with Gucci and Jeezy on the 19th. I'm actually really excited about this. But yeah, I think that that Jeezy's going to win most rounds. Most of the rounds Jeezy got. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's good to see you all, too. All right, y'all. Much love.